There is uh, Juan Antonio Pizzi, the Argentine manager of the Saudi Arabian side, a continental winner with Chile, winning the uh, Centenario edition of the Copa America in 2016 in the United States, and now trying to lead Saudi Arabia to glory. Had a taste for glory at the World Cup when they beat Egypt, and that led to a contract extension for Pizzi. Here's a look at the starting 11 for the home side. Al Owais, the goalkeeper, four across the back. Al Buraik, Al Sawi, Al Bulai, and Al Sharani make up the back four. Otaif, the defensive midfielder, with Al Faraj and Al Mokwani on either side. Hatem Bahebri, Salem Al Dosari, and Abdulaziz Al Bishi make up the attacking trio. Al Dosari, Salem, the man who scored that 95th minute winner, winner against Egypt at the World Cup. And Brazil. Well, the lineup has been known for a few days now. No big surprises, except Ederson gets the starting nod in place of Allison in goal. A back four of Fabinho, Marquinhos, Pablo, and Alexandro, with Pablo making his debut. Casemiro, Fred, and Renato Augusto make up the midfield triangle. And the familiar attacking threesome of Coutinho, Neymar, and Gabriel Jesus. Well, if that doesn't make you excited, then nothing ever will, because there's some of the best players in the world, and that man on the right, Neymar, what a talent he is. Sometimes gets criticized for maybe over elaborating the play, but wonderful pressure for PT as manager. But he's the first Saudi manager to survive a World Cup. Every other manager got sacked afterwards. They've kept him on because he did a decent job, as we mentioned, beating Egypt and finishing third. So something to build on. Quick, pacey players, virtually all of them playing in the local league. So no superstars and no great players but a solid team for Chiche, just surrounded by superstars. Unbelievable. He survived the World Cup as well. I think most folk believing that Brazil looked fantastic. They got beat by Gel uh, Belgium, but there were times when they looked great. And he's done a fantastic job over the last couple of years, Chiche. So he gets to stay on. And Casemiro giving the uh, pregame talk. As Brazil get ready to kick off in Riyadh. A well, familiar name to this tournament, it is being called the Super Classical Championship, and that is because the main event is next week, Tuesday, when Brazil measure up against Argentina, their Super Classical rivals. Yesterday, Argentina with a comfortable 3-0 win over Iraq. And Brazil looking to follow suit. There's Al Sharani having a chat with uh, his defensive partner, Al Bulayi. And we are underway in Riyadh. Brazil in their classic yellow shirts. Saudi Arabia in the all-greens alongside Gary Bailey. I'm Andres Cordero. It is the Super Classical Championship on BN Sports. Yeah, super exciting game as well, as we mentioned in the build-up. So many superstars in this Brazilian team. Wonderful skills. Expect goals, expect great moments. And what a treat it is to watch the Seleção. And good luck to Saudi Arabia. They did well in the World Cup. Let's see how they do today. Here's Casemiro taking a more direct approach as it's blasted forward, looking for Gabriel Jesus, well defended by Al Sharani. Al Dosari trying to split two defenders and able to get past Fred initially. Closed down by Marquinhos and solved it well. Well, back with Al Uwais. It's not quite cleared away. And given away to Casemiro in the midfield, Renato Augusto. And the pass by Gabriel Jesus. Not able to find Neymar. Al Bulai. Al Sharani. Otaif. That's nearly intercepted by Neymar, but he had his pocket picked. And back the other way from Saudi Arabia. A little bit of skill shown there by Al Faraj, the man who scored the equalizing penalty against Egypt at the World Cup. Nice, nice touches from Saudi. Here they go into Brazil's half for the first time virtually. But uh, some early touches that delighted the crowd. And they look comfortable on the ball. Nice passing side, good touches. But you could see early on how Brazil pressed them, chased them, and forced a turnover, which they're trying to do now. That's going to be the hardest thing for Saudi. They're not going to get one moment's peace here today. All right, sprints back to gather up for Saudi Arabia. And play out to Al Mokawi. Omar Hassawi. Al Buraik. 
Well, they're keeping the ball well, but it's a long way away from Ederson's goal at the moment. Catapulted forward where Pablo is there to intercept. Renato Augusto frees Neymar down this side, the near side. Neymar against Hawassi. Fred. Coutinho. Casemiro. There's Alexandros starting today at left back in the absence of Marcelo, the Real Madrid fullback absent through injury. So is Everton, the uh, Gremio player who had to exit the squad due to injury. He's been replaced by Lucas Moda, the Spurs man who makes a return to the national team. Renato Augusto, the long diagonal looking for Coutinho. What a lovely ball across the pitch just to switch there to Coutinho. Coutinho searching ball into the box. And Alsawi is there to deny Gabriel Jesus. Well, sign of things to come. Brazil camped in Saudi Arabia's half. Able to switch the ball from one side to the other with a wonderful strike. Ball into the box and danger immediately. So now a set piece for Saudi to defend. First corner kick of the match. Here's Coutinho to deliver. We'll play it short with Neymar. Renato Augusto chipped into the area. There is Neymar, but could not corral it. And it seemed as though Neymar and uh, Coutinho just bumping into each other. Yep, they did. That was uh, that was a tackle by themselves on themselves. But, uh, lifted hand there. But some of some of the skills. This crowd, the crowd went mad when they saw this from Aldosari. Some more skills from there Al-Faraj. from Alfaraj. So that can play. But uh, to get the sense they're going to be hemmed in their own half for most of this match because there's a very high press from Brazil. Had the uh, same feeling watching them open up the World Cup against Russia, and then they got beaten 5 0 by the host nation. It's Alexandro who sends it back into Saudi territory. Fred scooped forward looking for Gabriel Jesus, who starts out on the wing now. Alexandro. Casemiro. Switch flanks to Fabinho. Started right back today. He's been a defensive midfielder most of his career, certainly most of his time at Monaco, but did start out as a right back playing at the Rio Ave and Real Madrid's Castilla side. And in fact, he featured at right back against the United States. And that's a 2 0 win back in September in New Jersey. It's intercepted by Neymar. Still Neymar right into the heart of the Saudi defense. And, well, he wanted the foul. He's not going to get it. Well, he was tugged right in front of the referee, but, uh, but not given. But you see the pressure again. They get the ball back so quickly. And Peru beating the Saudis 3-0 at home. So you think if Peru can do that to Saudi Arabia, then Brazil would be expected to do something similar at least. But PC also not entirely happy with their performance against Bolivia where they were up uh, two goals to nil before allowing the Bolivians to level and settled for a two-all draw. So they have their moments, don't they, Saudi? They certainly do, and they have a good touch on the ball. And they're going to make it difficult for Brazil, especially early on. Now Bishi. Now Just squirts underneath. Hatem Bahebri, back in possession, the Brazilian defense. Casemiro had it taken away. That's a sloppy giveaway, a chance for Saudi Arabia. And Aldo Sarri has that effort blocked. Very sloppy from Casemiro, turning into trouble on the edge of your box. Mind you, the ball to him wasn't an easy one. But you cannot turn into areas you can't see. Should have just laid it off and instead got pickpocketed. And lucky it never came to anything. Here's Alburaic. Otaif. Ali Al Bulayi. Al Bulayik. Keeping it well now in the Brazil half, Saudi Arabia. Mohamed Al Bulayik. Taif into a bit of trouble, but solved it well. Here's Al Faraj. Heavy Al Hilal presence. 
And the team from the Saudi League, one of the biggest teams in the country. Likes of Al Sharani, Al Bulai, goalkeeper Al Awais, all playing for Al Hilal. This is promising for Bahebri. Back to Sharani. Salem. Al Burayek measuring up, chipped into the area. Not maybe the right idea, but the execution lacking. That was the end of a very good move by Saudi Arabia. Moved it around well, passed it, created spaces, put Brazil under a little bit of pressure. Yes, the final ball not good enough, but certainly pleasing the crowd and giving us the impression that they're not going to just come here to get beat by Brazil. They respect them, but they're going to try and put the Salasau under a bit of pressure whenever they can. Here's Neymar, absorbs the contact. This time he is fouled, and it is spotted. Amokawi, the guilty party. Free kick to Brazil. And generally in these friendlies, there's a little understanding that tackles shouldn't be as hard as they normally are. So I assume Saudi will respect that. No high, dangerous tackles, especially on Neymar. That's given away once more by Brazil. Pablo cleans up his own mess. Well, something you mentioned off the top, Pablo with a big opportunity today. This is his first ever call up to the national team, and he makes his debut against Saudi Arabia. A bit of a surprise inclusion, but when you take into account that both Miranda and Thiago Silva are 34 years old, Chichi is looking for a long-term partner for Marquinhos. Even Marquinhos is now featured uh, often as a defensive midfielder for Paris Saint-Germain. Yep, he has. Pablo coming uh, from Bordeaux, where he plays now, ex-Corinthians. But what an opportunity. 27 years of age, you have an opportunity to become the regular starting centre-back for one of the best football teams on this planet and play alongside the Neymars and Coutinho's and all the other superstars. Pablo, don't mess it up, my son. Wow, most people dream of this opportunity. Coutinho. Neymar. Meets up with Casemiro, but it's played back to Marquinhos. Neymar. Absorb the contact there. Here's Coutinho down the middle, leaves it for Neymar, looking for an opening. Neymar on his left. Neymar! Oh. And that just took a deflection. Could have gone anywhere, couldn't it? Brazil will have their second corner kick. Nope, the offside flag came up. Not quite sure, was it? Neymar, who was offside, he was coming from deep, so... But Chicha happy with that. Neymar attacking, getting the shot on target. Let's have a look. Oh, it oh, hits it off of Coutinho, yes. who is offside. Coutinho was... That's why Neymar was saying, well, what? I wasn't offside. What are you talking about? But he didn't see what we've just seen, which is Coutinho's heel being hit by the ball. Cabello Jesus. Oh. Excellent in control. Samito leaves it for Renato Augusto. Neymar. Scoot back to Renato Augusto on his left. Renato Augusto was denied by the captain. Still alive for Gabriel Jesus. And block point blank. Augusto had a good chance to have a shot there. He, he waited and waited and the opportunity was lost. I mean, how close to goal do you want to get before you shoot? Neymar. So quickly back in possession and back under control. Coutinho. Fabinho flick forward for Fred, but it'll land for Coutinho. The early cross, looking for Neymar on the doorstop, denied by the goalkeeper Alo Wise. Wow. That's twice now that the Saudis dodge a bullet. Big chance for Neymar there, drop right for him. I thought he's going to smash that into the back of the net, but instead he tries to just chip it in and gets blocked. But as you say, two big chances for Brazil in the space of a couple of minutes. Here comes Saudi Arabia with Al Buraik. Otaif. A bit of pressure here from Renato Augusto, forcing the ball back to the captain Al Hosawi. Al Bulai. Al Sharani. And he touches the midfield for Otaif. Pretty much a reference point in the middle for Saudi Arabia and for Juan Antonio Pizzi. Amokawi. Just noticing some, look how deep Brazil are. They've got a very low block here. Almost all of them in their own defensive third. I wonder if this is something Chichi's wanting them to do, is to be tighter 
more defensive when they are defending. Al-Sharani able to get there, squeezes it through into the box. Dangerous chance for Saudi Arabia. Oh, he's bending away from goal from Hussein al mukawi I just wonder if Chiche looks back at the World Cup and thinks we conceded a couple of time, two, uh, times too often. Perhaps we need to be more tighter in defense so when we lose the ball we get behind it in numbers and we work and when we attack then we can show all our free-flowing skills the other side this is an interesting look for Juan Antonio Pizzi today at least from the starting whistle forced to do without uh, his preferred center forward Mohamed Asiri of Al Ali and so it's an attacking midfielder in Hatem Bahabri who gets the starting nod as the center forward but they're playing without an out and out Target striker, Albishi, Aldosari, both wide players. So is Hatemba Ebri. Otaif. Running into a bit of trouble that time. Aldosari turned it over and then commits the foul. There's trouble for Saudi Arabia wherever they go. They're playing in their own half, deep in their own half, and they've got Brazilian players snapping at their heels everywhere. That is a foul, no question about that, on Casemiro. But there's, there's times when they do have a bit of space, Saudi Arabia, but there's other times when Brazil is just hunting in packs, closing them down and getting turnover ball. Casemiro under no real pressure. Marquinhos. Renato Augusto again will try that long diagonal to find Coutinho. Working against Al Sharani. Coutinho pass two, but not a third. It's intercepted by Al Bulayi. Placing the orbit by Fabinho. Nice bit of work there. Right by Ebri. And still by Ebri, but taking on the world. Rolls it back for Al Faraj. Otais. Bulayi. Catapulted to the edge of the box, looking for the uh, run of the fullback Al Burayek. It's headed away by Alexandro. And Chichi handing eight debutants. The first uh, international cap last month in September, including a trio of players who have survived to make this call up as well. Eder Militao, Arturo Barcelona, and Richarlison who was in the conversation for that uh, center forward spot despite playing wide for his club team. Well, expect a lot of changes at half time. So, for this crowd watching and for you at home, enjoy the likes of Neymar and Coutinho and Gabriel Jesus because chances are that Chicha is going to make wholesale changes run about the half-time spot because his eyes obviously focused on Argentina on Tuesday. There's Casemiro. Well, that's the thinking with Roberto Firmino anyway, who does seem to be the preferred center forward option at the moment. And so Gabriel Jesus getting the opportunity today as Roberto Firmino likely to start against Argentina on Tuesday. Renato Augusto, now Neymar. Still Renato Augusto blazing a trail forward and opens it up for Gabriel Jesus. Alexandro. Neymar. Just the 11 goals in 11 matches for PSG so far for Neymar in all competitions, <laughs> including eight in eight in the French Ligue 1. Wow. But Neymar and Mbappe. And PSG. Cavani. And Cavani, <laughs> but he's he's almost forgotten in this conversation because Mbappe has been incredible. Promising attack here for Saudi Arabia. Al Sharani with the overlap free inside of the box. Drop back for Salem Al Dosari. And the last ditch tackle by Pablo to deny. So poor defending out wide by Brazil at that uh, right back position, allowing uh, a tackle to come through. Here they are, though, on the counter. Coutinho. Played the early ball in for Neymar and sliding in Al Bulayi denies. Now Fred. It's given away to Al Bulayi. Al Mokawi. No 
way forward that time for Hatem Bahebri. But he does clean up to win it back for Saudi Arabia. Here come the Green Falcons. Mohamed Al Burayek. See at the stage, once Brazil do their high press and it doesn't work, they just seem to sit back around about the halfway line level. Just conserve the energy. Take a very, very casual approach to their press because you can't have a high press for 90 minutes. You're going to run yourself ragged up front. So they pick and choose their times and eventually they'll drop further and further back Brazil and then they try and deny as much space as possible. So interesting combination of tactics that Chiche is using. And Saudi Arabia now trying to get in behind Fabinho, who's playing a bit out of position in the defensive midfielder. <laughs> What's going on? And forcing the Brazilians into a bit of a rush. Man, they're playing some dangerous balls at the back, though, Brazil. I mean, that's the sort of tricky that looks great, but if, it, if, you, if you get the ball taken off you, it's a, you're about five yards from goal. Come on, guys. Okay, poor old Chicho, heart attack there. Here's another look at the uh, foul against Fred. Brought down by Salman al -Faraj. World Cup group stage uh, didn't go exactly according to plan for Saudi Arabia, but they did sort of redeem themselves with that 2-1 win over Egypt to close out the group stage following the 5-0 loss to Russia and a 1-0 defeat to Uruguay where they gave a good account of themselves but came away with no points. And they took that uh, game number three in Group A where they trailed before Salman al Faraj leveled from the penalty spot and Salam al Dusari scored the 95th minute winner in Volgograd. Remember that great drama, great excitement for Saudi Arabia. Here's Neymar. Neymar on his left, just flashing wide of the back post. Lovely run from Neymar once again. Brilliant balance, great skills. Just shot wide of the target. Defenders a little bit too scared to tackle him and give away a foul on the edge of the box, but just gets in front of the players. Unbelievable skill. Just let the ball wander from him a little bit at the end. So he had to stretch for the shot. But just an awesome player to watch when he's in free flow. By the way, that win over Egypt was uh, Saudi Arabia's first World Cup win in 24 years. Going all the way back to USA 94. Wow. And they picked up victories over Morocco at Giant Stadium and against Belgium at RFK. They went winless in the group stage of France 98, Korea Japan 02, and Germany 2006, and failed to qualify for 2010 or 2014. So a huge moment on the international stage this past summer for Saudi Arabia, and it was capped off by that big win over Egypt. And against Egypt as well, a nearby neighbor in the Arab world, I think that was even a sweeter victory. They're, they're probably a little bit unlucky they caught Russia uh, in great form because coming into that match, we didn't think much of Russia, and they just clicked on that day, and everything went perfectly for Russia. And I think Saudi were just unlucky to be on the receiving end of that. And Russia who then went on to knock out Spain. Yep, they did. Didn't expect it before the tournament. We thought Russia were going to really struggle, be one of the worst host nations, but they turned out to be extremely good. Well, Brazil, meanwhile, quarterfinal exit at the hands of Belgium in a 2-1 loss in Kazan. Started off a bit rocky, a 1-1 draw against Switzerland in the Group E opener, followed by wins over Costa Rica and Serbia, knocking off Mexico in the quarterfinals before that exit. So sad for all the neutrals because everybody really wants everyone who's neutral wants Brazil to go all the way to the final. But perhaps lucky for France, if I was a Here's French Neymar. fan, I'd rather face Belgium than mighty Brazil. So in the end, it all worked out for France perfectly. It was last touch by Alexandro. Goal kick for Saudi Arabia. Noticing culturally the either the singing or singing commentary or whatever it is in the background. Not normally allowed at football matches, any other noises. But I thought you were going to start singing for us. <laughs> Don't lose uh, viewers here today. <laughs> Here's Salem as well to pick out Al Faraj. Taken back by Renato Augusto, who's having a strong opening 22 minutes. Amokawi. Albrecht. Now 
Kawi. Renato Augusto trying to apply the pressure himself. It's just seeing there's six Al Hilal starters for Saudi Arabia. Al Bulai, Al Sharani, Al Taif, Al Faraj, Al Dasari, all club mates in the Saudi top flight. And that has to help in terms of the familiarity. Mm. Pizzi just, Pizzi. Yeah, well, he, he must be happy so far. Man. What are we, a quarter of the way through the match? Nil nil against one of the best footballing sides in the world without a shadow of a doubt. All these great big names, and of course they're going to chop and change at half time, and a new set of Brazilians will come on, I assume. So uh, and that that'll take a while for Brazil to settle. So all good for Saudi Arabia so far. It looks good kill from Gigi. <laughs> now Neymar sprung into the box. Two players there to receive, but well defended by Saudi Arabia. Poor clearance attempt, it falls for Gabriel Jesus, and there's the opening goal for Brazil. Gabriel Jesus, and it won't count. Flag is up. That's going to be worth another look. Chichi just trying to weigh it all up and see what happened there, and whether there was an offside, or let's have a look at it from here. Neymar doing well, gets there. Yeah, he's offside. Yeah. In that touch there, offside. And Renato Augusto gets called for the offside. Pity for Brazil because the finish was good and Neymar doing well to get stuck in and get the rebound. Mohamed Alawais wants to play long. One in the air by Casemiro but given back to Al Faraj. Here's Salem. Gets it back from Otaif. Albishi. Tried to go through the legs of Alexandro, and it's the Juve defender who wins out. Alfred. A lovely flick from Neymar. Sliding in Otaif, and they're allowed to continue. Here comes Gabriel Jesus. And there goes Gabriel Jesus. Brought down by Abdulaziz Albishi. Yeah, he's got something to prove, hasn't he, Gabriel Jesus? Expected so much from him. Even at Manchester City, he's battling to be a regular. It's Kunaguero who gets the call up there first. Yeah, just clips him on the ankle, so free kick it is. Gets the ball first, but that's a tricky tackle. Just showing a few little clashes, but as I say, it's a friendly, and the players have probably had a... They've been told just to take it a little bit easy. Nobody wants to get injured. Let's see how they fare on a... Free kick here, Brazil. Blasted in by Neymar. Palmed away by Aldo Wise. A terrific save to keep it at nil-nil. Still alive in the box for Brazil. Off the head of Renato Augusto. Now Coutinho flashes it over the crossbar. Good set piece. Renato Augusto with the, the header. Goalkeeper comes up. Aldo Wise with the save. In fact, it's not. It's Gabriel Jesus with the header. Keeper makes a decent save. But it's from set pieces that Brazil will be happy. They want to they want to make sure that they get more from set pieces than they have traditionally done in the past. Gabriel Jesus does so well to get that on target from an awkward angle. Taif gets pulled back by Fred, and that is spotted by the referee free kick to Saudi Arabia. Abulai, a bit of pressure again from Renato Augusto, but cleaned up by Abulai. Otaif, it's a good delivery of the wing for the fullback Al Sharani, working against Fabinho. Sneaks it through for Bahebri. Amokawi from distance, not about the shot, but opens up for Aburayek. Aburayek. Marhasawi doing well when they're in possession. Saudi Arabia. Flung in by Al Faraj. Al Sharani giving chase can keep it in. But doesn't. Well, nice thoughts, nice ideas, positive play from Saudi Arabia. You felt if they were a little bit quicker with the ball, they could have got something into the box and caused Brazil a few more problems. A little bit of 
clever skills there, but Otaif. But just if you're going to get, if you're going to score against Brazil, you've got to move that ball more quickly. Get it out wide, get it behind the defence, and get runners into the box. So a little bit too easy for Brazil to defend against, but still positive play from the Green Falcons. Here's Pablo. Alexandro. Fred. Casemiro. Renato Augusto is now adding a bit of width on the right-hand side. As both Neymar and Coutinho more central. Fabinho's cross. A wayward cross from the ex-Monaco man. There's nobody really big who's going to go attacking that. Maybe, he'll, maybe Gabriel Jesus might get on the end of a header, but you know, a ball a like that is normally... Ball. Yeah, there's a risky ball. Well, normally those crosses like that whipped in with height only work when you've got big centre-forwards who can attack the ball. Brazil, they need it more on the ground to feet. Alshirani does well to get there ahead of Fabinho and picks out Saman Alfraj. Amokawi. Alburaik. Well, stylistically, in terms of the approach of the game, you can see shades of uh, Juan Antonio Pizzi's Chile team that beat Argentina in the final of the 2016 Copa America in the United States. Shades of Bielsa have made their way all the way to Saudi Arabia. Oh, they've done well, Saudi, haven't they, so far? To be fair, Brazil could have scored one, maybe two. Perhaps should have done, which is why Chicha has got a, but a strained look on his face whenever the cameras catch him. He doesn't want to come here and not win, and I guess we all, and we're guilty of that as well. We're expecting three or four. You know, one to win for Brazil will almost be seen as failure. It's a big pressure on Brazil to score. Neymar looking for Alexandro. Casemiro. Heard the footsteps that time from Hatem Bahebri Casemiro and got it away just in time. Here's Marquinhos. Flung forward for the run of Alexandros working against Albishi. Last touched by Abdulaziz Albishi. Yep, just toying around with the ball. Brazil there just waiting, waiting, and suddenly a good run from Alexandro picked up. Lovely ball in, and now it's a corner. But uh, the crowd have been treated to some good moments, lovely skills, but I'm sure they would love a goal, preferably for their home country, but I think they're all Brazilian fans. <laughs> they wouldn't even mind seeing Brazil score. Oh, Neymar getting ready to deliver. Third corner for Brazil. In swinger back post. It's well defended by uh, Mohamed Al Burayek. Brazil get another corner kick from the opposite flag. Just wonder if they can do something different this time. Brazil rather than knock it high and into the box. Maybe just try a short corner. Get players moving the box. One thing a short corner allows you allows you to lose your marker because you move out and you go back in. So maybe just try something different or not. Let's see. Coutinho, outswinger toward the penalty spot. Casemiro swings and did not get enough on it. And just over a half hour played. Saudi Arabia nil, Brazil nil. Brazil have had a goal disallowed for offside. Otaif, lovely interplay. And the attack short circuits at the foot of Neymar. It's a good idea for Saudi Arabia. If that ball gets through, could have been all sorts of problems for Brazil. But Neymar intercepts and, and now here come Brazil again. Gabriel Jesus again starting out wide, working against Alburaik. Dispossessed by Alburaik. Albishi would chase it down. It's brought down this time by Alexandro, and Saudi Arabia have a free kick deep in their own half. That's just classic these days. Was it a water break, I think? Yep. I was just saying it's classic these days when you when you're in your own half and you can't you can't you're tight against the touchline, you can't get out, you feel someone on your back, you just fall over, and generally the referee gives you the free kick, as happened a moment or two ago. There we are. Great vibe in the stadium. Fans enjoying it. Well, the Neymar. temperature is 90 degrees. Wow. It will be significantly hotter on the pitch. 
Now there, that's what I felt he, he could have hit it earlier, Renato Acosta. Great chance there, he waited. took over and one of the first things he did was to bring back a couple of players he knew from his days at Corinthians and Paulinho and Renato Augusto both were playing in China at the time in fact both are playing in China now as well Paulinho took much of the plot it's because of the move to Barcelona in hindsight but Renato Augusto seemed you know, as a better passer of the ball and provides a bit more going forward this little montage of skills all around there the crowd getting into it it's amazing how many Saudi Arabia fans were holding Neymar jerseys and Brazilian jerseys. <laughs> Not a real surprise. The most expensive player in the history of football after Paris Saint-Germain paid 222 million euro to exercise his bio clause. The clause that Barcelona set because they wouldn't expect anyone to meet. <laughs> well, I mean, transfer fees have gone crazy the last few years. I just wonder what Mbappe is worth. Four goals last weekend. 19 years of age. What have you got? Yeah. And I think that benefits Neymar. A lot of people say Neymar has been or is in danger of being overshadowed by Mbappe. But to have the youngster alongside him, I think, opens up gaps for Neymar. You're so busy marking Mbappe that Neymar can sneak in. So I expect to see the Brazilian score a ton of goals this season for PSG. And there is Artur and Malcolm, two players hoping to make an impact in this game. A couple of Barcelona players on the bench. Felipe Luis of Atletico Madrid also available. There's John Miranda and Lucas Moura who makes a return to the national team. Short of talent, aren't they, Brazil? <laughs> who could they possibly turn to? <laughs> top players playing at top clubs. Oh, the best clubs. And many of the best players in the world. Which is why they expected to do so much more in the World Cup and disappointed to go out at the quarterfinals. I think they were favourites alongside of alongside with France, Brazil. Huge disappointment when they went out for them. So back to normal service now with uh, Gabriel Jesus in the middle after spending the last 10 minutes or so on the left wing. Renato Augusto pressing forward in Saudi Arabia trying to pass through. Otaif. Omar Hassawi. A risky ball into the middle, raffled in and lost as Pablo steps forward to win it for Brazil. And Neymar appealing for a handball but won't get it. Otaif. Casemiro picks his pocket but a foul whistled against the Real Madrid midfielder. He was surrounded by Brazilian shirts there. Had nowhere to go. <laughs> Wherever he went he was going to get tackled, Otaif. In the end, just a stray arm from Casemiro. Have a look again, the yellow shirt's ready to hunt. Close down, look at this, close down, quickly, quickly. Make it so difficult for Saudi Arabia to get out of their half, except when you give away a foul like that. <laughs> By the way, in another match featuring clubs from this region, we saw Qatar beat Ecuador 4-3 to three earlier today in Doha. It's a huge victory for the 2022 World Cup hosts. Mokawi who kept it alive. Huh? Shirani now crossing it in toward the back post and it drifts away. That's Third a poor ball. Kick. Yeah, it was good, nice build up in there. There was a couple of green shirts running into the box. A better ball could have caused Brazil a few problems, given Edison something to do, because he hasn't had too much so far in this match. No play out through Casemiro. Now Fred. Movement from Neymar as he gets away from Alburayek. Into the middle for Fred, played in the space. Dummy through by Renato Augusto and Gabriel Jesus couldn't get there. Pablo. Fabinho just gets it away in time. Marquinhos reads it all the way back to Ederson. Good work here by Saudi Arabia, closing down. Green shirts have forced Brazil back, but of course it leaves gaps. And that's always a danger in a high press, is 
You leave too many players up the pitch, you can be exposed. Now Neymar cutting in. Neymar tried to split two defenders, dispossessed by Alburayek. Otaif. A real pleasant sight to see the way that Saudi Riba played the ball out of the back under the pressure from Brazil. They don't just boot it away, they try and pass their way through. Yep, they do. 100% right. They got some good football skills, some nice touches, a little bit of pace here and there. And they're a decent side. I think there was a time when we'd look at some of these teams and go, well, they're way below Brazil. But yeah, of course, they are below Brazil, but they're not way below. It's, they're certainly caught up, and a good coach like PT has, has given them a few good touches and style. Well, Bishi's pass won't find uh, by every. I think a lot of neutrals, though, at this stage are saying, hey, where's the goal, Brazil? Come on. We expect at least one goal by half time. Augusto. We've paid our money to see the superstars. Now Casemiro leaves it for Renato Augusto. Coutinho starting in a deeper spot now. Picks out Neymar. Fabinho. Casemiro. Alexandro. Been a perfect start for Juventus in City A this season. Might have expected a bit of a boost with the arrival of Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, I think the only team in the top five leagues of Europe who are still 100% in all competitions. What a surprise when oh, lovely good pass. skills. And here they go, two against two if they can hurry. Salem. And Casemiro scrambles back. And it's Casemiro now, Renato Augusto. Coutinho, played into space for the run of Gabriel Jesus, working against the captain, Omar Hassawi. Stands his ground and forces a throw for Brazil. Yeah, Hassawi doing well there to hold up Gabriel Jesus. Got to be pleased with that if you're a centre-back against one of the top strikers in the world, a Manchester City striker. What a pass that is from uh, Salman al -Faraj. And it's not just pretty, it's effective because yeah. it absolutely released Salem al Dusari on the break. Yeah, very impressed with Saudi Arabia. And yet, having said that, Brazil have had three or four clear-cut opportunities to have scored. Disallow goal and one or two blocks. So possibly should or could have been one or two nil up to Brazil, even with Saudi playing this well. Al Shirani, neat touch to get away from his marker. Still Al Shirani. Bayabri. As Albishi forward, but not able to get past Marquinhos, who stands his ground. Maybe just catches uh, Hatem Bahebri. Not spotted by the referee. Well, he's holding his face, and I guess that the feeling is that if a player is holding his face, you've got to give him a chance to see uh, if he can get some help, just in case it's a serious injury. Let's have a look. There's a hand out there from Marquinhos. From Marquinhos but just a hand, it wasn't an elbow. Uh, yeah, sometimes you can get poked in the eye by the hand, and that can be very painful. Well, since taking over the Brazilian national team, Chichi with a record of 22 wins, four draws, and two defeats. That uh, loss in the World Cup to Belgium. Only the second loss under Chichi, the other being uh, against Argentina. And imagine which Chichi fielded a, an experimental side. It wasn't Brazil's best team for that edition of the Super Classical. So really just one bad result in his tenure, but what a bad result it was against Belgium. The one that really would have got them to the semis and given them a great chance to go on and win the World Cup. There's no good time to lose at the World Cup, and the quarterfinals was a poor one yeah. for Brazil. But if they, if they lost in the, in the sort of build-up to the World Cup or sure. any other stage, or even in the, the group stage of the World Cup, they could have recovered. But once you reach the knockout stage of the tournament you've been aiming for for the last three, four years, wow. That's a bitter pill to swallow. Al Shirani just gets it away. Settled here by Fabinho. Renato Augusto. Now Marquinhos. Fred. Defending very deep at the moment, Saudi Arabia. Coutinho. Fred wants to get it wide to Alexandro, but no openings. Pablo. 
Acevedo, Marquinhos. Cato Gusto leaves it nicely for Fabinho. Squared in for Fred. Lovely turn away from his man. Into the area looking for Gabriel Jesus. And well read by Omar Hausawi. Hausawi once again comes to the rescue. That's second time in the last couple of minutes he's made a crucial interception. The time before was to stop Gabriel Jesus. Oh, skills again. Barrage combining <laughs> with Al Dosari and it's the Green Falcons who are putting on a show now. Back the other way comes Neymar. Neymar on his right, slotted through for Gabriel Jesus. And it's in for the opener. Brazil 1, Saudi Arabia 0. Neymar unlocks the defense, and Gabriel Jesus punches it through. Yeah, lovely pass from Neymar. I thought for a second he maybe hit it a little bit too hard, but Gabriel Jesus with his pace and speed gets on the end of it. Chichi relaxed and goes, at last they've scored. And LOIs in goals. And goal had kept a clean sheet until now. And I think the crowd, even though they're for the local team, they're quite happy that Brazil have eventually got their breakthrough. Neymar running, times it perfect. Oh, gee. I think it is just on side. Goalkeeper maybe slows down a touch. Could he have gone all the way? Quick, more quickly. Gets a right hand on it, but it goes in. Well, he's understandably upset with himself. Uh, Mohamed Olwais, he gets a hand on this. And Gabriel yeah, Jesus just gets it underneath. It's a player who needed a goal. He failed to score at the World Cup in Russia. Left out of the squad last month for these September friendlies. And just two goals in ten games for Manchester City so far this season. But he puts Brazil in front now. Maybe this will give his season a lift when he goes back to England. Because a lot of strikers play on confidence. If your confidence is low, you don't take the strike. You don't try the, the shot that beats the keeper. And this goal, assuming he stays on the pitch for the second half, maybe he can add a second or a third. Could be his day. It was uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy who told Gonzalo Higuain that goals are like ketchup. Turn the bottle over and nothing comes out. All of a sudden, you're <laughs> tapping the back of it and it all comes out at the same time. <laughs> that's, that's a lovely explanation. And in many, in many occasions, true. And it's because it's linked to confidence. The first one brings the confidence and then a whole bunch of goals come after that. Final minute of the opening half of regulation. It took until the 43rd minute for Brazil and Gabriel Jesus to find the breakthrough. What's the response from Saudi Arabia? There's Pablo. Alexandro. Surprised to see the uh, two fullbacks so withdrawn. Maybe as expected from Fabinho, who's a bit out of position. Alexandro's an attack minded left back and had a pretty re deep role so far. He has, and I get the sense that, that Chichi's trying to get. A sort of stability in the way they defend and mentioned you know bodies behind the ball a high press but if you don't get the ball come back get all the bodies behind it he doesn't want uh, fullbacks pushing up and leaving huge gaps he's just using it to, to sort of tactically practice how they will play against argentina because they're always going to score brazil that you can guarantee but if they can if they can stop giving away what we call cheap goals because both fullbacks are pushed up and the defensive midfield is pushed up and everyone's trying to score. If they can stop conceding those sort of goals, then they could be almost unbeatable. Now Alexandro advance on the near side and Neymar down the middle, combining with Coutinho. Here's Alexandro into the box. Bumped off the ball by Albici. No fouls is the referee. Well, just That's wondering safe. if this is a, a final opportunity for viewers at home to watch Neymar and perhaps Coutinho one or two others don't know if Chicho will make a change at half time or in the 60th minute but just in case enjoy them now and again on Tuesday against Argentina same kickoff time 2 p.m. Eastern Renato Augusto Casemiro and splitting pass to find now Neymar after Coutinho slotted through once more for Gabriel Jesus to run by Coutinho. Empty net. Coutinho doubles the lead for Brazil. It was all too easy for the five-time world champions, but it will not count. That explains it. Offside flag is up. Saudi Arabia stopped. Yep. Well offside. Well spotted by the assistant. Now Shirani is the last man who springs the trap. Just a claim for a penalty there. Not, not given. Alexandro 
Referee says he went for the ball and it's not a penalty, simple as that. <laughs> Very expressive yeah. from the referee. This will be tracked down by Fred. Out of play from Abdulaziz Albishi. Well, a decent first half for the host. No question about that, Saudi Arabia. They've impressed, they've had some lovely skills. Pacey on the counter attack. Have defended well, and to be only 1 0 down against the mighty Brazil is not a disgrace at all. Get to produce a shot on target, but they have produced some moments of inspiration, Saudi Arabia. And they'll take that with them to the halftime break as it is Brazil 1, Saudi Arabia 0. The goal by Gabriel Jesus, his 11th international goal in his 23rd cap as the Verde Amarela in front. Let's hope for more action from the uh, Brazilians in the second half. More goals, more great players, lots to look forward to. We'll step aside for a quick commercial break and take a look back at that uh, opening half when we come back. <laughs> 